All right, guys, so I'm, I'm back out this weekend and I'm not too far from Killen. I'm up at the Ben Laws Nature Reserve and directly behind me, that big chap over there, that's my favourite Munro, Meow Nantamakin. I've been up it three times now. Uh, I'm off out with a comrade and we're pitched up, you know, next to this beautiful lock -in. We've managed to find a nice little flat spot. I'm out with the Ben Starav, my friend, she's going to have a give you an honest opinion on how the equipment goes as well so it's not just my opinion you'll get her opinion too uh, it's to get down to about minus one minus two tonight but it's to be nice and dry uh, there's a few new things happening i've got a brand new phone a brand new camera it's meant to be the best uh, camera on the market uh, for a smartphone anyway um, i've got my microphone and you know the receiver and transmitter uh, i've got that as back in action as well so Better quality audio, better quality, blah, blah, better quality videography, and I've got a few things to review as well, like a brand new fire pit. So hope you guys enjoy the content. Smash! Let's check the scenery out. We've got a little waterfall over there, so let's go and check that bad boy out first. And then downside out this camping spot, it's rather boggy, rather boggy. You've got a big nice dam there. God damn, that's a good looking dam and the little waterfall over here. Let's go and take a little stroll down to the little lock -in. I mean, let's see if we can get down there. We've got a dog. I love golden retrievers. It's a golden retriever that I want. However, two and a half thousand pounds? Hmm, don't think so. There's a gentleman, he's up from Liverpool. He's brought his two dogs with him. The Golden Retriever is called Jürgen, after Jürgen Klopp and uh, he's got another little dog he got it a, what do you call it, rescue from Romania her name's Sky. like the Isle, Isle of Skye in Scotland Good grief, don't slip, don't drop the phone this phone costs way too much money to break Ugh. and here's the view from down here absolutely gorgeous I don't know if I'd go swimming in that. Looks a bit, looks like a horror sci-fi movie, but you know it's not your bog standard, you know, light brown sand. Um, over in that direction was where I had my first ever ever whale camp. I gotta get my favourite moon row up there, Meow Nantamakin. You've got Ben Laws and Ben Glass over in that direction. Hopefully, I can get shots of that in the morning. But this is absolutely beautiful. Right, let's get up there and do a rundown of tonight's setup. I've got with me the Van Gogh Star Ave. Not had that out in over a year. Uh, so looking forward to that tonight. See what it's like when you've got two people sleeping in it and not one. And I'll show you the sleeping bag and the sleeping mats that I've got with me today. Again, you've got that gentleman down at the bottom with his two dogs, he's sleeping in the car, but this is the, uh, tonight's setup. So I will review this little fire pit shortly. We're going to have it here, the sitting area. We're going to capitalise on this bad boy here, this little block. And this is tonight's uh, sleeping system and tent. So we've got with us the Van Gogh Star Ave, two person tent. It's like a roided up version of the, you know, the Van Gogh Nevis and the Van Gogh Banshee. Um, You've got the side porch uh, entrance and on either end you have these little doors here. You can fully open them or mesh open them. Permits better, you know, ventilation. Um, but they're pretty cool. If there's driving rain coming in from, you know, this side, you can look out the other one. So you've got a nice little view to capitalise on. There's the night speakers, bad boys. Uh, really enjoyed them. I re reviewed them on a previous video. I'll do it again on this one. Uh, but let's have a little look inside. What have we got? That gives you an idea of the porch or the vestibule. It's not the greatest, but you know, you can get your boots in either end of the tent and you can do your cooking here. But tonight's setup, I think I'm going to have to tidy this bad boy up and then capitalise on the. What do you call it? The word escaped me now. Tripod. Right, so a little bit more on the Van Gogh Star Ave. It's a tunnel tent, so you've got uh, the three arch poles, 
with the bigger one in the middle. Um, not entirely too sure on the hydrostatic head. I don't really emphasise on the main emphasise on that stat because at the end of the day they're go, they don't really really leak, but I think it's around the 3000 millimeter mark. They use their own Van Gogh poles, the Van Gogh um, Power Flex. But look, I've had this out in strong winds. There was one of the videos where the mountain across from us, uh, directly across from us, measured wind speeds up to 60 miles per hour. Now, I don't think we got that, even though it was directly across from us, but there was some really strong gusts that must have hit about 50, but they were constant around, you know, the 25, 30 mark. And this tent did a great job. Just, you would want to, you know, pitch this end into the wind, not the side, that would take an absolute tanking otherwise. Um, I wouldn't really take it out in stronger winds than that, even though it's a classic tunnel tent. I'm, it's a Van Gogh tent, it's a Van Gogh budget tent in the grand scheme of things. I've had out in sustained rainfall on multiple occasions and it's did a great job. But even in the wind, it's, it's not a noisy tent, it's not a noisy tent. However, there has been some, you know, condensation issues. But this is tonight's sleep up, uh, sleep diesel. Uh, tonight's uh, sleep system. Um, I've got with me the Dauto Exosphere. Stretches by 25%. Goes down to minus 10, then the comfort is around what minus 4. I love this bag, it's never let me down. And again, temperatures are to get down to around freezing. I've had this down below freezing on multiple occasions, and again, I've been nice and toasty. I've had this bag for several years now. I think I bought this bag back in 2019. I've got with me uh, as the sleeping mat the light tour. Our value 5.8, so overkill for tonight. Again, I'm a side sleeper with a dodgy back, lower back. I've got a dodgy back all over, if anything. This sort of like honeycomb design is great for side sleepers with a dodgy back. Alex, however, I've gave her my warmest bag. Now this can go down to about minus 22. The keys are sleeping bag. I've had that out on several occasions. It, it was disappointing on one occasion, but I think, um, I mean, I left the, what do you call it? the top end, you know, the hood open. So there was no doubt a lot of heat escaping from that. I just thought since it was, you know, look at how thick that is. I thought uh, because it was such a warm bag, I may have got away with leaving the hood open. But no, no, didn't work. Uh, it's, it's very broad, so for a big chat like myself, it does the job. She'll be testing that tonight. It's actually her first time camping, her first time camping. So it'll be interesting to hear her uh, uh, opinions on the sleeping bag and the sleeping mat. I've gave her the flex tail pillow. She wants it, she likes a big thick pillow. My little flannel pillow won't do the job, you know, that, that's a, uh, it does a job for me, but if you like a thick cushion, yeah, a thick pillow, I gave her that bad boy. She's got the x -ped. Now, unlike uh, Thermarest, which is, again, the more horizontal slats design, see this more vertical design, again, if you're a side sleeper with a dodgy back, bad boy, this bad boy does the job. Our value is around 4, so again, eh, our value 4 should take down to about like, what, minus 10, minus 15 at a push. So it's overkill for tonight. She's got um, some issue with her spine, so I gave her that. I gave her that one to try out. It's, a, it's wider than this one and also thicker. But look, this gives you an idea how cosy it's going to be for the two of us. You know, there's barely any room at the side. Uh, that's a... Uh, my transmitter or receiver, can't remember which one, just ignore that. So it's going to be cosy for us, but look at the length. Good, plenty of space down there, good space down there. And look, I, I've sat up in this tent before, but you need to sit in the centre area. But uh, guys, let me know what you think, and we'll try and get some dog content. Let's look at the camera, Let's look at the zoom in this bad boy. Look at the zoom, that's 14, that's 20 times. That is incredible. Big man has no idea. Oh, I think the dog does. We're getting a lot done in this video so far. How about we have a little look at the fire pit? It's going to be a game changer, game changer. So this is the portable fire pit that I've just recently purchased. I got it on Amazon for £32. Normally I bring that, you know, that mesh fire pit, but you know, that's a pain in the backside putting by, and it only really like last 10 uses at a push. Uh, they normally go for about £15, but if you spend double the price, boom, you get a stainless, uh, stainless steel fire pit. 
you know, it's pretty slick. Look, you can ram that, you know me, I carry heavy. I'm, I'm bad for it, uh, carrying a lot. But, you know, it protects the environment and you get a good fire pit. <laughs> but uh, stainless steel, I had a look online to find the weight. It's claiming to be 300 grams. This is not 300 grams. I would say it's 1.3 kilograms. Not the lightest, but, you know, it's lighter than certainly anything you'd have at home. But uh, this is its little, little bag it comes in. And uh, there we go. So let's have a little look inside and see what it's got involved. Falling over my words today, guys. I think I've got a bit of anxiety. And plus, I'm trying to get, you know, back into it, back into the camping and uh, back into videoing it. So let's have a little look at this little fire pit. I have no idea what that's for and there's no instructions for it either. So can anyone tell me what this is for? That is, yeah, I, I, oh, oh, wait a minute, what's going on? What is this for? It comes in this little plastic tube. It's like a little Harry Potter wand. Hmm. I'm probably being stupid, but I do not specialise in fire pits. Anyway, so these are the legs. You open up the legs and um, let's see. Open up nice and wide. And then you get the main body of the fire pit. And this little section here. That's where those little holes go. That little opening goes. You just pop it in there. Boom. And then... The little ashtray to catch the ash. You pop that in at the bottom. And then you put this little grill in there. And that, uh, you know, it stabilises the whole thing. You put the wood on top of that. And it's not just a fire pit, it's also a grill. So you just open this um, up, and I'm not quite sure what you do with this. But it sort of like um, sits on top. So you don't sit it directly on top. Otherwise that would happen. But give me two quick seconds. I think it, it's, it's something to do with that little compartment here. You pop it on under, or it sits on top. One of the two, I think that's it there. Absolutely no idea, but uh, it seems to be a bit more raised off the, what do you call it? Main compartment of the fire pit. And then boom, there you have it. You have a fire pit and you have a grill. And I am no longer vegetarian. My body's telling me to eat meat. So we will be cooking a Wagyu on this bad boy later on. But guys, let me know what you think of the little fire pit. Uh, for £30, uh, it's going to last a long time. And it's also going to protect the environment. So lift it up and imagine it just sits on this as well. So any ash isn't going to fall onto the ground. It's going to fall onto this little tray. So first up, we've got some halloumi and red pepper and do, 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 do. in this little bag we have some wagyu rump steak uh, we've got some, no idea how you pronounce that we've got wagyu sirloin and we have the Polish Sausages. We also have some Polish ketchup and Polish mustard. Cannot wait. Yeah, not gonna lie, guys, uh, the car's right there. Car is right there. It's a car camp. So that's the fire on the go. The wood is absolutely crap. Oof, look at the front camera on this one. Guys, let me know what you think about the new uh, phone and its uh, camera. Because this is the, uh, the front camera and I was expecting a lot of like, background noise, a lot of grain. But that is out outrageously brilliant. 
Um, because I used to be a vegetarian, I have no idea how to cook meat. This one doesn't know how to cook meat, so we're absolutely winging it. Steak should be no problem, but the sausages, that's going to be interesting. Uh, it's quite chilly, because again, it's that type of wood that doesn't burn very well. So we're hoping to cook the food, and then we're just going to throw all, all the wood on, and hopefully get an inferno on the go. But let me know what you think about the new camera, let me know what you think about the fire pit slash a uh, fire grill and uh, aye so this little Tronsmart T7 speaker we've only had it on since what I think we put it on about four or five o'clock it's now seven and uh, it's went from 100% to 40% so I'm not entirely impressed with the longevity of the speakers and to be honest with you it's not particularly loud as well the overall quality is pretty decent but you know the battery life is poor and well I shouldn't really be complaining about how loud it is because after all you don't want to disturb your neighbours but I'm going to have to get back to the guy and ask him Look, is the battery on this only supposed to last about four or five hours when it's in full volume? I'll let you know if anyone's interested in speakers when they're out camping. How good do these bad boys look? Guys, it's not good enough that came from this bag. It's a very beautiful day. Still got some snow on the tops. Our comrade left quite early, about six o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah, so an interesting sleep that was. What? Yeah, I thought that video was playing when I slept. Sadly, it wasn't. I was just giving a rundown of last night. Um, Bangle Star Half 200. It's a tight tent for two people. Very tight tent. Got a lot of muscle aches moving about and getting out in the middle of the night to do, do the toilet. Uh, it was warm in there for two people. Temperatures must have got down to about what, one or two Celsius. It was that warm that neither of us were in my sleeping bags. Both sleeping bags were fully open. She's a cold sleeper. So that key's a sleeping bag. Did an excellent job at keeping her warm. And did doubt her ex as pair. Never let me down. Uh, she was happy with the light to her sleeping, bat, uh, sleeping mat. She was nice and comfortable, but I struggled. I don't really think. I do not really think it's the ex-ped's fault, really. Just it's a tight tent, and I think I wasn't on the flattest of ground. However, as you seen from one of the clips, the one downside from the keys of sleeping bag is it bleeds a lot. There was down everywhere when she woke up, and that's not good. That's not good at all. Last night, I think those steaks were medium well, rather than a medium rare or a medium. Uh, they were rather chewy, I need to learn how to cook meat. But, uh, yeah, I was going to wrap up and head home. It's about 9 o'clock, throw the tent in the bag, uh, just throw the tent in the car. And move on home. But let me know what you think about the new camera, guys, and the audio equipment. So, take care, y'all. And I'll see y'all in the next adventure.